I'm building up quite a collection of power banks here in the solar shed and that's really useful because I can charge them up directly from solar during the day or from the lead acid battery bank of an evening and I can take that power and use it elsewhere. You can use power banks to power Arduino projects and lamps and all those sorts of things. Do you know what? I even charge my mobile phone from one. But when you buy a power bank, how do you know it's got the capacity that you paid for? Well, typically you would find a load such as this resistive USB load, or you might find yourself a electronic load such as this one. And you'd connect to these through some sort of meter. And this is a simple USB power meter here, charger doctor as they're often called. And this will show you the voltage, the current, and the accumulated milliamp hours um, that's been drawn from your power bank. The problem is there's often a discrepancy between the accumulated milliamp hours on the meter after you've depleted that power bank and the uh, milliamp hour rating of the power bank itself. And why is that? Now before I go any further I should point out that this particular power bank was provided free of charge by Blitzwolf for this particular video. Now on the bottom of this power bank it mentions that it's got a capacity of 15,600 milliamp hours or 15.6 amp hours. But that's the capacity of the cells and those cells have a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts, not the 5 volts that you'll typically be getting from a power bank to charge USB devices. Now Blitzwolf handily put on here that it's also got a capacity of 57.72 watt hours and that's really handy because watts and therefore watt hours take into account voltage. So we would hope to extract 57.72 watt hours from this power bank at 5 volts as well as if we discharge the cells themselves at 3.7 volts. Now Blitzwolf did also provide an 18 watt uh, QC 3.0 charger to actually charge the power bank and a decent micro USB cable as well to ensure that the results were fair. But I used my ZKE electronic load here, the EDB USB, if I get it the right way up, um, electronic load which also connects to the computer and allows me to monitor what's going on and create some pretty graphs. And here's the first of those graphs and this is a simple discharge of the uh, Blitzwolf here at one amp, not stressing it at all and straight away we can see that this claims the capacity is 10.15 amp hours at an average voltage of 5.14 so 10.15 amp hours looks a bit disappointing when we've got a power bank which says it's 15.6 amp hours but when we look at the energy Result here 52.2 watt hours. Well, that's extremely close to the 57.7 watt hours claimed on the case of that power bank. And 52.2 watt hours is simply 10.15 amp hours, the capacity times by the voltage of 5.14 on average, should give us a result very close to 52.2 watt hours. But where have my other 5.5 watt hours gone? Well, of course, they've been lost in heat and inefficiencies in the DC to DC conversion. Let's see if we can work out what sort of efficiency that DC to DC converter is working at. So if we assume that the 57.7 watt hours is correct, the efficiency, which I'll just put as E double F, um, equals the power out over the rated power. The power out is 52.2 watt hours and the rated was 57.7 and I did the calculation earlier that works out at 90 percent and I'm perfectly happy with that. It's perfectly acceptable that 10 percent of the capacity has been lost in the DC to DC conversion from that 3.7 volts nominal to that 5 volt output where I tested this power bank.
So I thought it might be interesting to compare the Blitzwolf results with another power bank, something a little bit more suspicious, and this real Max power bank is exactly that. On the back it states it has 10,000 milliamp hour capacity at 3.7 volts, so that is 37 watt hours, isn't it? Well, we can see the discharge curve here on the left, and the capacity is 2011 milliamp hours. But more importantly, looking at the watt hours, well, actually, it's 9,797 milliwatt hours. Let's round that up. It's 10 watt hours. Claimed 37 watt hours, but I managed to extract just 10 watt hours. And I also charged it up here on the right hand side, and I had to put 2,822 milliamp hours into this power bank to until it claimed it was fully charged and of course that's at 5 volts but crucially here 14.7 watt hours of energy went into that power bank the one that claims to have 37 watt hours of capacity so clearly this doesn't have the capacity stated on the power bank but the real capacity of the real max must be somewhere between the energy we got out of it and the energy we had to put back into it. So somewhere between 10 watt hours and 14 watt hours. Uh, so let's say this has roughly about 12 watt hours of capacity inside it. Nothing real or particularly to the max about that. So it is a bit of a shame that all the power bank manufacturers are selling their power banks with this number, the 15.6 amp hours or 15,600 milliamp hours, and not selling them under the watt hours. But I guess that's just a game of numbers because 15,600 looks a lot more impressive than 57.7. But now I've got my USB electronic load plugged into the computer and a new power bank to play with, well, I decided to do a few more tests on the Blitzwolf. Now the Blitzwolf just has one input here, a micro USB, but two outputs and the top one here is normal 5V USB and at the bottom it's normal 5V USB but it's also quick charge 3.0 compatible which means it can output voltages of 5V, 9V or 12V. So the first test I did was the normal 5 volt USB output and uh, I tested it between uh, 0.5 and 3 amps output in 30 second increments and uh, as you can see it hap was happily keeping uh, more than 5 volts at 2.5 amps but at 3 amps it was struggling that voltage dropped until I ended the test. I then went on to look at the QC 3.0 output and here it is at 5 volts, the same test, up to 3 amps and that output was able to uh, sustain 5 volts and 3 amps for the 30 second test so that one concluded perfectly. As you can see the voltage did drop down a little bit as the current increased but that's perfectly normal. The final test here at 12 volts, well it did struggle a little bit at 12 volts and 2 amps, but that's 24 watts, that's an awful lot of power. It did drop down to uh, 10.7 volts at this point, but it was able to deliver 12 volts at 1.5 amps, so what's that? 18 watts, that's uh, pretty good going. So there we have the Blitzwolf BWP5 power bank and my method for working out whether power banks have their true rated capacity or not. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.